Welcome to the second lecture in the uh, development of the uh, nervous system and today we will uh, focus on the development of the spinal cord. Now we have a couple of slides already uh, discussed in the previous lecture but let me remind you that you have a lateral posterior view of the neural tube of an imperio and we mentioned that in the neural tube which is the primordium of the brain and the spinal cord and we mentioned that the upper one third will give the brain right the brain i mean and the brain stem and diencephalon and uh, or while the uh, caudal two-thirds of the neural tube will give the spinal cord now again I don't want to repeat it again. We mentioned about the cross-section of the neural tube. And of course, we have, as we mentioned earlier, we have three layers. If you take cross-section of the neural tube, we have the most inner one, which is the ventricular zone that contains, of course, the uh, neuroepithelial cells. We'll talk about each layer of those in this lecture. And of course, you have the mantle uh, zone, the intermediate layer, and you have the outer or we call it marginal uh, zone. And of course you have outside the uh, missing kind that you see here. Now, as I mentioned, this is another view for the neural tube layers. And of course the most inner one that's in the green is the ventricular uh, zone of uh, uh, undifferentiated cells so it has I would say the undifferentiated that will for the development will give the or migrate to the mantle zone and so this is the ventricular zone and here my friends uh, is the middle layer which is called the mantle zone that contains of course cell bodies uh, of uh, neurons that you know if you take cross if you remember in the adult uh, cross section of a spinal cord um, you have here is the uh, gray uh, matter so this the mantle zone the middle one is the future gray matter while the outer zone which is the marginal zone as you see here it will be that contains of course the fibers of those axons and it will form the um, uh, future uh, white matter so again here's the three layers ventricular mantle and marginal zone and I would like again to remind you uh, that the, the the wall of the neural tube take a cross section it contains a neuroepithelial um, uh, cells and they will start to give rise to neuro uh, a plast that will form the um, uh, mantle layer you see here. So let us start now uh, with the mantle layer. This is the most intermediate layer as you see in the uh, figures. And uh, uh, no need to repeat again and say that the mantle layer formed the gray matter uh, and uh, not just the gray matter because it will differentiate into um, ventral basal plate and dorsal alar plates in which you know if you have an idea of course about the uh, cross section of adult spinal cord you know that the ventral horn uh, contains motor neurons right while the uh, dorsal horn contains sensory uh, neurons. Of course, you have a horn on the right and one on the left, and similarly anteriorly. But if you look at here, you will see that they are the alar plate, I mean posteriorly, and the basal plate are separated by this sulcus that known as sulcus limitans so sulcus limitans is the border between the basal blade anteriorly and, and the alar plate posteriorly so there's another view i like this figure so um 
again, this is the sulcus limitant here, sulcus limitans here and here, so it's the border or the boundary between the alar plate posteriorly and the basal uh, uh, plates uh, anteriorly. Furthermore, you see, here's of course posteriorly and here is anteriorly for this cross-section. Look at the plates here. There is a roof plate here and floor plate here. We'll talk about them. So, when you say, uh, look at it here, this is at the beginning, look at the lumen here of the um, central canal. It's wide. But look at the basal plates and alar plates, but with further development and proliferation of these plates or either the alar or basal, what will happen? Well, my friend, it will form like, imagine that they are proliferated like that, proliferated like that, and similarly anteriorly. So what you get here is a sulcus and fissure. So they will form the uh, ventral median fissure and the dorsal uh, median uh, septum. And of course, look at the progress of narrowing of the central canal. Yes, we mentioned the basal uh, alar plates and roof and floor as well. So, no need to mention again that the ventral thickening here, I will use the bread pen, this thickening called the basal anteriorly, of course, the basal plates that contains ventral motor neurons, ventral motor cells. That means they will control, for example, the muscles, right? And posteriorly, you have the alar plates that contain, of course, neurons, but sensory neurons, because you know that the sensation comes to the uh, uh, dorsal horns, right? Because you know the alar plates will form the horns, posterior or dorsal horns. Um, now, also, you can see the sulcus limitant here. Uh, sulcus limitans uh, here that marks the border or they mark the border between the basal and uh, alar. Now what else we have? Let me erase these things. Now the floor plate and roof plate. So the dorsal and uh, 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 ventral uh, midline area, as you see of the neural tube, these area uh, or areas of the neural tube known as roof and floor plates, of course, they don't contain neuroplast. So they contain what? They contain or they are um, areas for fibers crossing from right to left, right? but they don't contain uh, neuroplast. So as I mentioned, they serve as a pathways uh, for nerve fibers crossing from one side to uh, another, right? Uh, so we mentioned that the basal plates will form the ventral horn of or horns of the spinal cord while the um, alar plates form the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. But what about the lateral horn? Because we know that in the um, uh, adult spinal cord, I mean the mature spinal cord, we have intermediate horn or we call it sometime lateral horn so this intermediate horn it created from accumulation of groups of neurons I will use spin for example accumulation of neurons here between the alar and basal plate 
to form the lateral horns or intermediate horns now these horns intermediate horns are not exist in the whole of spinal cord so they just exist because you know that the intermediate horn they represent the uh, uh, sympathetic part of central nervous system sympathetic part of central nervous system which is very important so they uh, they exist between the level of um, T1 segment of spinal cord up to L2 or L3 that means from T1, T2 and so forth, T12 and L1, L2 and sometimes L3 so they contain what? they contain neurons uh, of sympathetic portion of autonomic nervous system okay that was the important layer which is the mantle layer let us get a little bit out from this mantle uh, layer so let us talk about the marginal layer so I think you know from this cross-section of uh, complete development of spinal cord so that the gray matter which is like a shape in the middle as you see here and the outside is the white matter which is opposite to the brain anyway so this is the white matter so the marginal layer and from the end I would say increased in the size proliferated uh, this area I mean the marginal uh, layer proliferate more and more while because there is ascending and descending pathways pass from there and from time from segment to segment this development of ascending and descending fibers uh, I would say create much more uh, proliferation of the marginal uh, layer and for that it forms the um, uh, white columns or we call it um, as you see here funiculus so you will get ventral funiculus lateral funiculus dorsal funiculus so this area this area white of course white matter white matter white matter they are columns one ventral, one dorsal, and one lateral. Very simple, right? You can say dorsal column, dorsal white column, lateral white column, the ventral white column, or you can say dorsal funiculus, lateral funiculus, ventral funiculus. But it's a white matter. And of course, we will talk about that. There's, there are nerve fibers here, motor and of course you have a sensory to the dorsal column but the motor roots myelinate before the sensory ones right so again you remember from the previous lecture how um how's the neural tube is very important that gives the brain and the spinal cord excellent so there's a brain and spinal cord but also we remember that and while the neural tube formed during the development of a neural tube because we have a neural plates then the edge of a neural plate starts uh, to proliferate creating something like that groove neural groove then these folds start to development and start to approximate each other to form a neural tube that's it but we mentioned that the edge of the neural plate here will not participate in the formation of neural tube that means these is called neural crest so they will move laterally as you see so they will not contribute to the um, neural tube but that's fine that's fine uh, so what will happen to those crests yes the neural crests are very important as you see in the table on the left 
but I will try so the neural crest they develop and give all of these things on the left side on the table but as we talk about the nervous system so it's uh, very important to get focus more on central nervous system look at the neural crest these crests like while well, they develop first they will go give melanocyte but forget that for now let us focus on nervous system so yes they give the ganglion of the sympathetic trunk you remember the sympathetic trunk on the right and then on the left formed like like peach and string so these sympathetic ganglions formed by neural crest very important just the sympathetic no but also the dorsal root ganglion or ganglia dorsal root ganglion as you see we call it sometimes spinal ganglion or dorsal root ganglion or spinal ganglion they contain the uh, unipolar neurons right so also they are created from the neural crest right furthermore uh, not just the ganglion sympathetic trunk but also like ganglion closed st structures in the um, uh, uh, our body like cilia ganglion another sympathetic ganglion like uh, plexus in the intestine in the wall of the intestine renal ganglion close to the kidneys and also very important the medulla of the suprarenal gland this part because you know the suprarenal gland has a cortex and medulla so the medulla created from the neural crest so it has neuronal origin i would say so what else parasympathetic ganglion of course in the git adrenal medulla we mentioned that yes what about the glia cells what about the schwann cells look at the schwann cells here because you know that the myelination of the nerves uh, or nerve fibers outside the central nervous system outside the brain and spinal cord the myelination outside in the peripheral nervous system uh, created by schwann cells schwann cells while in the central no it's oligodendrocyte so that means the schwann cells also formed from the neural crest um, meninges not all meninges will talk about that not all the meninges just the internal two layers and um, yes those are the most important structures formed by the neural uh, crest yes this uh, slide already repeated from the uh, previous lecture but in harry uh, again this is the neural tube that gives the brain and spinal cord we talk about today about the spinal cord but it could to mention okay let us take a cross section uh, look at the pale color blue color here this is missing chyme before talk about the neural tube itself the missing chyme will give the microglia cells so microglia a glia cell not originated from the uh, neurooctoder no it originated from missing chyme there missing chymal vessels so the neural tube formed from neurooctoderm and it gives the neurons and glia uh, 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 glioplast because you know we have astrocyte and oligodendrocyte a plus ebendimal cells so these three glia cells created originated from the neural tube itself but what about the microglia and the schwann cells glia cells microglia as i mentioned from the missing chyme surrounding the neural tube while the schwann cells as i mentioned from the neural crest jumping to the spinal nerves um what is interesting here do you remember the uh, basal plate and you remember the alar plate so now when you say spinal nerves you know it forms from uh, ventral nerve roots and dorsal nerve roots okay so the ventral nerve roots come from come from where well the ventral nerve roots my friends 
come from uh, nerve cells in the basal plate. That means in the basal plate you have the motor nerve cells. From these motor nerve cells, the uh, uh, ventral nerve uh, root come out from there. Okay, but what about the dorsal uh, nerve roots? The dorsal nerve roots come not from alar plate. No, it come. They come from the dorsal root ganglion. So the dorsal root ganglion, you know, it comes. Uh, from the neural crest anyway the unipolar neurons inside it they uh, from there the dorsal nerve roots come like uh, peripherally and centrally and those come centrally toward the spinal cord they continue all the way until they reach the neurons in the alar plate so the dorsal uh, uh, nerve uh, roots come from the dorsal root ganglion uh, and they grow toward the alar uh, plate. Now, those are the central processes. We call them central processes while the peripheral processes uh, continue and they join the ventral nerve root, of course, to form the uh, spinal nerve now you know as i uh, as we mentioned the dorsal and the ventral uh, uh, nerve roots join to form spinal nerve then the spinal nerve divides again into dorsal and ventral this is the say spinal nerve so the spinal nerve divides again into dorsal and uh, ventral uh, rami so dorsal ramus and ventral ramus in which the dorsal ramus you know or dorsal rami if you i talk about plural so they innervate the dorsal axial uh, musculature uh, in the back muscles, I mean, um, in the back also the vertebral joints and the skin of the back. While the ventral rami, they continue. Now, of course, this is dorsal. Okay, this is anterior to to um, uh, innervate the ventral body wall, the body wall, for example, the chest and abdomen and so forth, and they create a kind of plexus. Um, uh, plexus is like a brachial plexus, lumbosacral plexus inferiorly. So this is the functional one of each of them. Now, uh, still we have to cover the brain and the spinal cord with meninges. Meninges, uh, we have three layers and you know, you have the ura matter, you have arachnoid matter and you have the most inner one, the pia matter. Well, it's good to know that the uh, dura matter came out from or it comes out from mesodermal origin from mesodermal look at the missing kind that surrounds the neural tube and crest here so it uh, uh, continues or develop into uh, uh, dura so the dura comes from the missing kind while the um, arachnoid and pia matters they uh, originate from ectodermal origin exactly from the neural crest from the neural crest now uh, the the space uh, with further development the space between the arachnoid and the pia matter say this is space um, it becomes like the subarachnoid space and will uh, fill by c s uh, f now, yes, we have the spinal cord um, uh, covered by uh, layers, and uh, in this case, um, look at the eight weeks here. At eight weeks, you have the spinal cord extend to the end of the vertebral column. Look at it here. So, this is in a blue color, right? So, in the spinal cord fills 
all the length of vertebral canal because you know these are uh, vertebrae all the way down and you know this is the body of vertebra and this is the vertebral uh, foramen that form the vertebral canal now with further development because the uh, vertebral column um, develops like faster than the spinal cord and nervous system so they enlarge and because of that the spinal cord becomes like shorter and as you see here at 24th week it takes the level of s1 but listen look at the p matter here the red color here the red line that connects the conus uh, the conus medullaris the tip of the spinal cord i mean to the last uh, uh, tip of the vertebral column now with further development the new nate or i mean new porn which is very important this one and this one is very important so in the new porn the lower border of the spinal cord becomes at the level of l3 that means if you want to take uh, a CSF or you want to do a lumbar puncture you have to go below the L3 right for example between L4 and 5 this is uh, safe now in adults the spinal cord also uh, because of the development of the vertebral column again faster than the spinal cord and so the the conus medullaris uh, or medullary cone uh, it becomes like at higher level at the lower border of l1 so it's good to remember this is very important so the safe area for both neonate and adult is to take a lumbar puncture from uh, between the l4 and 5 this is l4 and this is l5 so it's safe for adult it also safe for a new born now uh again i don't want to repeat again but uh, we mentioned in the earlier sites that schwann cells originate of course they myelinate the peripheral nervous system while the oligodendrocyte myelinates the uh, uh, nerve fibers in the central nervous system so oligodendrocyte for central nervous system brain and spinal cord any fibers inside the brain and spinal cord will be myelinated by oligodendrocyte while any nerve fiber outside the central nervous system like spinal nerves um, uh, and so forth uh, i mean nerves outside the central nervous system radial nerve median nerve etc uh, innervated by schwann cells that means out of brain and the spinal cord will be myelinated by schwann cell schwann cell originated from neural crest while oligo um, dendro uh, site originate from the neural tube itself right because you remember we have a neural tube and a neural crest neural the oligodendrocyte comes from neural tube itself while the uh, schwann cells comes uh, schwann cells come from the neural crest now look at the figures at the bottom here so this is a cross-section of a spinal cord in which you see the basal plate or let us say now the ventral gray horn of spinal cord with uh, motor neurons there and still it's not myelinated that means it's before the fourth week uh, fourth month so at the fourth month the myelination is started the myelination of nerve fibers started so look at it here so inside the spinal cord what you can see is oligodendrocyte because it's uh, the glial cells responsible for myelination inside the central nervous system inside the brain and spinal cord while in the peripheral nerves once the nerve comes out so it's outside the central nervous system so it's myelinated by schwann cells right schwann cells again here's like parallel and parallel oligodendrocyte again and forming of a new redeemer cells i mean myelination using schwann cells so uh we have to mention that not yes the myelination started at the fourth month of the age of embryo 
and not all fibers will myelinate by that time so the myelination uh, 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 continues uh, until the first year of postnatal life that means one year after birth still the nerve fibers continue the process of myelination uh, so uh, not just that but also you know the corticospinal tract which is a very important tract in the uh, nervous system so the myelination of this tract will not complete it until the end of the second year postnatal year right because you need to get like it's myelinated when it becomes like functional right and like with the movement and so forth. so the baby cannot move cannot uh, walk for example because the brain is still not completely developed right so we mentioned we repeated all of these uh, things shift to the uh, uh, the spina bifida which is like uh, the congenital anomalies in the uh, uh, nervous uh, system which is very important so let us uh, uh, talk first um, about like a brief introduction for spina bifida that's you know this is again the uh, uh, vertebra you see here this is the body and uh, you see this is the body and this is the vertebral arch it creates a kind of arch posteriorly that encircles the vertebral foramen uh, here so sometime the vertebral the vertebral arch or there is a failure of fusion of the vertebral vertebral artery uh, here so that results in a kind of an opening like this can sometimes the meninges or parts from neural tissue pulse out of that area so we have two types uh, we talk about spina bifida we have spina bifida occulta that means hidden you will not see anything or sometime you get like pulge outside of a sac here called spina bifida uh, cystica spina because something of the spinal cord bifida that means something pivot open like this cystica that means like a sac right so the spina bifida occulta that's a hidden one so as you see here it's a kind of look at the vertebral arch it's not completed though so there is a defect in the vertebral arch that's you know still covered by the uh, skin so you will not notice indeed anything so still spinal cord and uh, meninges like inside and covered by the skin so it's hidden we'll talk about that but look at the spina bifida cystica in which not just the vertebral arch not completed it should complete it like this right should complete it like this it's not the vertebral arch not completed but also there is a, 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 a defect in the neural tube in which a, a neural tissue and meninges look at the arachnoid matter here it's like pulse outside right so the meninges pulsed outside in this case just the meninges pulsed outside right but still the spinal cord inside the vertebral foramen not pulled out but in this case look not just the meninges but also the spinal cord pulsed outside let us talk more about that so let us take the first one which is the spina bifida occulta the hidden one look the vertebral arts not completed there is a defect there but the spinal cord and meninges are preserved right and uh, of course covered here by a skin as you see here and uh, uh in in which uh, what i want to say that covered by a skin and usual doesn't involve underlying neuronal tissue right there is no neuronal tissue pulse outside they are preserved here inside the vertebral foramen usually it occurs at the level of 
L4 S1 that means at the lower part of the back and in this case you will not notice anything except a kind of tuft of hair look at the tuft of the hair at that region you can see it also here in this cross section and in the, this child so this lack of the fusion of vertebral arch it affects about 10 percent of normal people sometimes you don't know right you don't know that you have a spinal bifida occulta. Uh, here is the figure. We'll talk about each type that shows you like different or various types of spinal bifida and the associated defect of vertebral uh, arch. It can be like spinal bifida occulta, not that it's seen as I mentioned, but you have sometime the severe type. Uh, which is known as spina bifida cystica. There is a cyst pulled outside. It doesn't matter what inside that cyst. You have, uh, I would say, three cases. So again, mostly in the lumbosacral region here, and um, usually it leads to neurological uh, deficits, but not. There is no mental retardation. So the uh, child, um, uh, uh, like aware of everything, and uh, uh, his uh, he has no mental challenge, right? So he's okay. So let us take the mildest one, which is the spina bifida with meningo seal. Meningo that means menin meninges, the layers of the brain include their seal that means swelling right pulse outside so that means look at the vertebral arch not completed as a circle and there is a skin outside but what's going out the going out what pulsed out or projected out is the meninges here as you see the dura uh, matter for example right so the uh, there is as at the first there is a there is a cyst or not yes there is a, a cystic swelling beneath the skin containing C S F and it includes uh, the meninges just but spinal cord and nerves uh, which is great of course they are normal so they are in their position and normal but that's it. So what's pulsed outside is the meninges with CSF. The second type, which is the spina bifida with meningomyloceal. Not just meninges, but also myloceal. That means, myelo, it means spinal cord. Myelo, that means spinal cord. So look at it here. So you have a cyst pulse outside, yes, there is a vertebral arch defect, and there is a meninges pulsed out, not just the meninges, because we said meninges, meningomyloceal. That means there is a spinal cord and the spinal uh, nerves pulsed there, right? So the spinal cord or their nerve roots are adherent to the inner wall of the sac indeed in the meningomyloceal most of the time most of the time the spinal cord is injured or injured at the time of the birth right so the most severe one which is right really horrible which is the uh, spina bifida with uh, we call it myloschisis myloschisis uh, myloschisis in arabic it means in shiqaq al-nukha in which, unfortunately, uh, children paralyzed beyond the location of it. So, in this case, this is the most severe type of spina um, bifida. So, in these cases, the spinal cord, as you see, it's in the affected area. There is no skin covering that area, and the neuronal, because of neuronal folds, failed to fuse. If you remember the neuronal folds that uh, start to fuse with each other, so if the neuronal folds here, 
failed to fuse to form a neuronal tube what you see here is the spinal cord neuronal tissue exposed outside as a flattened mass and there is no skin devoid of skin this is these are the kinds of uh, types of spina bifida and thank you